Hello, hello, this is Dorothy Kuhn, and I have a wonderful guest for you today on the Successible She podcast. And before I introduce our wonderful guest, Aaron Lipstadt, uh, he, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit that's related to our topic today, which is how to learn the thing that you need next uh, as you're moving into that next phase of your social life your personal life, your career life, your business life. Uh, and, and for me, I had just a huge aha moment by working with somebody else who has expertise in a place where I, you know, am uh, weak at. And we've all got places uh, like that. So, you know, I, uh, as many of you know, I'm a scientist by training. I worked in technology throughout my career. And uh, even so, I'm really good at helping people with what I do. Um, I didn't have a good way to describe that. So here it is, here it is. I help primarily women overcome shocked response syndrome and transform from stewing, shouting, shrinking, or shunning those who don't respect you or appreciate you into standing up for yourself in a way that's powerful, playful, and fun. So uh, that's so much better than the word salad that I was uh, doing before. And it's been transformative for me to be able to uh, be succinct and honest and really value laden in that um, in that description. And Aaron, when he was staying uh, with, uh, I I run an Airbnb here out of my home, just one room. And Aaron was one of my guests, and he has got a really interesting backstory. So, Aaron, I uh, I just want to. Uh, thank you for being here with us today, and sure. tell us a little bit about, you know, like your your before and your aha and uh, what you're doing now in addition. Well, um, I think I was had aspirations for a long time to be a professional musician, and uh, I was pursuing that, and... I don't, I don't know. I never was able to really have, feel comfortable fully getting into that, especially in the business, the business side of it. And as far as promoting myself, trying to find shows or get booked and I just never was able to do that. And uh, so as a result, I didn't really make that much money from it. And when I it did have shows that I was making money from it, a lot of the times I wasn't enjoying those shows because I was like uh, just back kind of background music, a lot of like playing at a coffee shop when nobody's there to see me. And uh, that can, sometimes it was okay. And then sometimes I really didn't like it. So yeah, at some point I was uh, considering other sources of income or just switching professions altogether. Yeah, and you know, I so get that. Every, uh, nearly every musician that I know, uh, you know, has got a tremendous amount of talent, and uh, and part of the joy of playing for other people is to connect with them. Yeah, definitely. And then, yeah, and uh, and for them to respond to the the music uh, as as it's unfolding uh, before their eyes and ears. Is that right? Yeah, uh, for me, one of the the best things about music is getting, well, really playing with other people. Like I, if I'm playing with other people, especially other competent musicians, and uh, it's like you're having a conversation with them, and uh, it's really, that that I really enjoy. Yeah. But the, part of that conversation conversation is also the audience that's there, even if they're not making the music, their, their emotion or their attention is definitely affecting the the quality of the music and you have to be aware of that when you're performing and incorporate that and if you're being if the people there are participating or half participating it really makes it more difficult and then uh, yeah so yeah oh I so get that and you know I haven't thought about this in years but you have reminded me of when I was in undergraduate school you know I uh, I had uh, learned to play an instrument the flute and uh, and there were uh, a group of uh, other folks in in the physics department, uh, in the math department, who loved to play bossa nova jazz. And, oh yeah, I love bossa nova. Oh, it's so delicious and yummy. 
Um, and, you know, a, a, a big part of that whole jazz scene, even so we were just, we were okay musicians, uh, nothing, nothing fantastic. Uh, but, you know, one person, you know, we'd all play together and then one person would, would take a riff and then somebody else would pick it up. And, and I had never thought about that uh, in the context of a conversation, but it, it really was very much a conversation. Yeah. And yeah. when other people are involved in the audience, you, you know, you want them uh, to be, be part of that because that connection, we're just wired for connection, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. If you can share some mood or emotion or just an experience together, yeah, that makes it so much better than uh, just getting up there and kind of struggling to you start questioning why am I even doing this or this doesn't feel well this doesn't feel honest yeah yeah I get yeah. it feels it feels like elevator music or yeah. something oh gosh gosh and, so, and yeah. so you were looking for something else to do and you uh and you you picked something and you made a you know two or three stabs at it so so tell a little bit about that story and how you went from struggling with it to being really pretty good at it well yeah I what you're referring to is uh, I've I play poker for a living now and I have for the last two or three years and that's my pretty much only source of income now at the moment I would at some point maybe like to start playing more music again like I did in the past but uh yeah and that um I tried it when I was much younger uh, with kind of in a delusional way uh <laughs> which is easy to do in poker or gambling specifically because um you can have a really good stretch for let's say like two months of playing like anybody can win in two months I, I mean it's not likely but anybody can and uh it's really easy to think that that short winning time means that you're you're good and oh. i just just the other day i um a very very nice guy and i don't i was playing with a, a gentleman that who i feel fits into this very well and he's maybe been playing a month or so and he's been running really lucky and uh, he now considers himself a, a professional and it's clear to everybody else there that he has a whole lot to learn yeah you know I, I saw him make some horrible but in his mind he's been winning and he's now yeah so he's that's not, the evidence that he was looking yeah. for and he's not aware yeah. of other evidence that yeah. is necessary is that the idea I think so. So that definitely happened to me in the past. Like uh, I was ignoring all the the negative results. I would keep track of how I was doing. And then when I had a really bad patch, I would just like stop keeping track and then start again when I had a good, a good streak. So it was very inaccurate records. And I was just kind of cherry picking the good times and not really stepping back and saying, am I actually good enough to win at this? Cause it is poker is a funny game. Like it's, it's part, part skill and part luck and it's probably and it's kind of confusing for a lot I've tried to explain this to a girlfriend and my parents and struggled and it's like in the short term luck is the biggest factor and that's hard to to deal with sometimes mm -hmm. like in one day or one week whether you're lucky or not has the most to do with whether you're winning but for a month or two months or half a year, then skill is the biggest factor. Skill being like the decisions that you're making, hopefully, that are better yes. than, because it's a game of decisions, really. Mm -hmm. uh, if you make better decisions in the long term, uh, you should come out on top. But yes. it's uh, sometimes it takes a while to get there. It does. And, uh, you're reminding me of, I believe his name is Gary Kaspersky, the uh, famous chess player. Who is? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was he was always looking for you know if he if he made a play that that the re, the result of that play put him in a compromised position by by the next play by the next by the other player you know he would uh, really look at that mistake and not blame himself or or ignore it or think that it was just bad luck or something uh, that way of course it's it's a game of strategy and there's a lot of strategy in card playing isn't there there is it depends on what game you're playing and which opponents you're playing but mm -hmm. there is a lot of strategy and over the long term your strategic decisions is the biggest factor to whether you're going to win or lose mm -hmm. but since luck still is such a big factor 
it's easy to think that you're winning because you're playing good. Uh huh. You know, it's hard it's, to tease that out of the luck part. Right. So it's very easy to become delusional in, in that way. And that happens to a lot of people. It happened to me a couple of times. I was overconfident and I was a little bit arrogant, I think, in the sense that, look, I felt that I was more intelligent than most of the people I'm playing with. And I thought like that. And, and I've been playing strategy games for a long time in general. And I felt like those things in myself should give me an edge. Like I didn't really consider that poker playing just like music is kind of a skill in itself and even though somebody might be predisposed to being a good musician you still have to put in the hours and the time to really learn right, what you're right. what you're doing and and I wasn't really doing that wholeheartedly with or honestly with poker so I was yeah. delu delusional for a while and I uh, it was not successful my first several attempts I get it. I get like it. And so eight. those attempts probably cost you some. There was <laughs> There's some real, real dollar them. amount that they did cost me. I, uh, I don't have good enough records to say. If I had to guess, I'd probably between ten and fifteen thousand dollars uh -huh. of that's, failed attempts. Yeah, <laughs> I get that's more money than we want to lose, right? Definitely. But Definitely. Uh, but you did something to break out of that that mindset. What what made you? want to try something different what what was that well um i went back to school to study music because i didn't well, in maybe three or four years ago which is a little bit odd as i was older than most of the people there but i wanted to fit i had started a music degree in 2007 i think and then i wanted to finish so i, I went back to school for music and I was looking for a part-time job and I couldn't find a job that was fitting with my busy school schedule. Mm -hmm. And they had just opened these new poker rooms near uh, my school in, uh, in Texas, which they hadn't had any. And anytime like a new poker room pops up somewhere, it's usually better for the first couple of years because people in the area aren't used to playing and mm -hmm. that makes the games better. So I thought, okay, maybe these games will be better. I'll give it one more try and this time I'll keep really good records and I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna just kind of cherry pick the good times and forget to you know make that mistake again right so yeah anyway I, I started again and after I had like 300 hours or so in these games I realized that I was barely winning. I think I was about break even. I was winning like four dollars an hour or something like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, which is not a lot of money. Which is not enough to like. Yeah. It's not enough to support yourself. And right. I knew from what I had researched online, like in this size of game that I was playing, I should should be able like the big winners in the game should be winning twenty to twenty five dollars an hour. So it was look, three hundred hours isn't a huge set. Like you could just be running unlucky, but that's like a beginning beginning to indicate that there might be something wrong that you're doing if right over that amount of time. So I don't know. I um, yeah, I had the. I just really didn't want to. I wanted to give it a real effort this time, and really, and the big thing for me specifically, which is um, I had reached, there's these different training websites, and I sought out one particular training website. It mm -hmm. costs like forty dollars a month or something, uh, poker training. And I, I went on this site and I watched every video and I, you know, watched them again and I did the discussions and really, really put in a lot, a lot, a lot of hours, of really mm -hmm. trying to understand. And I began to realize, so like, oh, I was making all these mistakes and not really realizing I was just blaming other people, blaming bad luck, and not. <laughs> not accepting that I was making these mistakes and that I was the problem. I was just look, always, always blaming somebody, somebody or something else or luck yeah. specifically. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and we've all been guilty of that. You know, I've certainly blamed other yeah. people for stuff that was really like on you, Dorothy. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, if, we're, if our, uh, if we're all honest with ourselves, there are some of our uh, viewers and listeners who are having that same kind of reaction. What was the <laughs> feedback uh, from that course that that helped you realize that? What do you remember? Something uh, that was um, an aha moment? I don't know if I remember anything specific. It was 
more just I was kind of remembering maybe like strategic decisions in the past that I used to habitually make. Uh -huh. And then with the new information I had got, I was like, oh, I was making bad decisions. Like I was making decisions that were costing me money and not realizing it. And I did that for a long time. So you thought that you were making a good decision. I thought I was making good decisions, but I wasn't. There was a yeah. much better decision available that you weren't aware of. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. I, and and I didn't I didn't want to. Yeah, I just wasn't capable. I wasn't aware enough. It's not, I did want to be good enough. And I, you know, back when I made the first attempts, I, I wanted to win, and I didn't mind putting in the time. But I just wasn't aware of so many mistakes I was making, and that was mostly because of I was too arrogant to admit that maybe these people are playing better than me. Maybe. Yeah. I'm, you know, and you know that is so important uh, to to be able to uh, have somebody who is you know a few steps ahead of you, yeah. who, who can uh, clue you into those things that that you can't yet see. Right. That's yeah. I, yeah. Or, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, just yeah. I really wasn't aware of that. That uh, all these mistakes, like you were saying. Wonderful. And what's the, what's the benefit of doing all that training? And uh, give us just a little, uh, kind of a, a little snippet of what kinds of training. There's strategy in the game for how you play mm -hmm. the cards uh, uh, under different kinds of circumstances. But, there's, right. uh, but I can imagine that there are other areas of, of strategy that, that I'm not even aware of. Yeah, I think... I would think of it in two main ways. One, it's helpful, just the basic decisions you have to make in a hand that you need to make good decisions. As far as there's four rounds of betting, I can bet whatever amount I want. Other people are betting amounts against me. I have to interpret what those bets means and make the best decision with the information that I have. So getting better at making those decisions is one part that's very important. Uh -huh. But then another very important part that I ignored in the past is the the business or poker management side of it, which is very, very important in itself oh. as, as far as like, um, should I even play in this game to begin with? Because I need to manage, no matter what game I play in, I only win 55 or 60% of the time and right now in the games that I play in. So if I play in a game that's too big for too long, it doesn't matter if I have that small edge, I'm, gonna, I'm going to lose. So oh. if I make the mistake of, let's say I play in a $10,000 game or something mm -hmm. and I can only afford to lose that game five times. If I play in that game for two months, it doesn't, chances are 90% of the time I'm going to go broke. But even yeah. if I have an edge in that game, just the ups and so I shouldn't, and I shouldn't maybe play in the thousand dollar buy-in game where I can afford to lose 50 times. Mm -hmm. and, and then I can realize my edge. And I, in the, in the past, I didn't realize how important it was to really, manage your yourself because if i don't have money i can't play in the games i can't make money so i can't overextend myself right. and and apart from that there's some game like maybe that thousand dollar buying game is good 90 percent of the time but maybe the other 10 percent there's some out of town players and they're really good and the games are really tough for whatever reason that night mm -hmm. and I should be aware enough and honest enough to realize that there's five other good players in the game and maybe this isn't the time to play the game. Maybe I should wait mm -hmm. for a better moment. So all those kind of out poker strategy decisions are mm -hmm. that and um, managing your emotions when it, cause it's a, it's very easy to get. So like if things go wrong, you get unlucky, somebody catches a lucky card on you. Like the guy is insulting you on purpose or <laughs> not on purpose. And, like there's so many ways you had a fight with your girlfriend, whatever it is, look, it's so easy to get thrown off the balance emotionally. And then you're sitting there and you can like feel your heartbeat double and your, your body temperature rising. And then all of a sudden, like I'm barely concentrate. Like I played a hand, but I barely even remember playing it. And it's like, uh -huh. you're completely off mentally. Yeah, And, and everybody at the table can see that on you that you're not uh, there. Maybe, maybe not, but it's definitely, it's a real factor and I oh. so whereas before I was playing in a way where I'm making good decisions uh -huh. now now if I'm getting thrown off emotionally I've just gone from being a winning player to being a losing player right. because now my decision making is so affected by these emotions uh -huh. and in <laughs> poker yeah in poker we call it going on tilt but that's on the tilt. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, like like the tilt in yeah, a, like the uh, arcade uh, machine. Slot or machine or something, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is that is so good. And you know, uh, for the kinds of uh, situations, you know, really difficult situations that I help, you know, women like navigate through so that they, you know, show up powerful and playful uh, with uh, with some fun, uh, so that they're respected on the other side of a difficult uh, transaction. You know, we can go off. You know, we can tilt out as well. Is that the expression? Yeah. Uh, go, we usually say go on tilt, but go tilt out tilt. works too. <laughs> yeah, we can go on tilt too because uh, once you once you get, you know, visibly angry with somebody, uh, so that they, yeah. so that all they see is anger, then that gives that person the uh, the instant ability to blame you. But when you know how to use your anger to show up in power, then you get to win, and they will respect you. It's a, it's amazing what uh, what happens when power shows up with a bit of play and fun. Yeah, it's at least in poker. Yeah, it's very easy to to let these uh, uh, emotions affect you negatively. And yeah. I know for for me, um, I don't know how well <laughs> how good it would be to try and use my anger at the poker table in a positive way. I I, I generally find myself trying to take a break because. Yeah. Um, if I really feel myself getting heated in whatever way, literally heated, so like I can feel the temperature rising a lot of the time, uh, I have to at least walk away from the table for five or 10 minutes, go outside, try and breathe for a little bit and assess the situation. And uh -huh. and if I can't calm myself down, then I have to be honest enough to be like, well, I guess I just have to quit for today. But hopefully yeah. I can calm myself down. But uh, yeah. that's that usually happens like at least once or twice every eight or 10 hours session I play. So there you it's, go. it's a constant struggle for me, at least at the, maybe one day I'll get better at it, but at least right now I'm continually trying to stay emotionally balanced and calm myself down when I'm indeed, playing. Indeed, indeed. And, and uh, doing that, calming that uh, emotion down and channeling it in some productive way is, uh, is a big part of my work and, and, yeah. and for you, you know, that's like recognizing it and, and stepping out because that's the most productive way to deal with it, right? Yeah, and, and sometimes it's funny. Uh, I've had moments where I've recognized that I'm off. I know that I'm off, but I still can't t pull myself away from the table. I'm just stuck there. And it's the most bizarre thing. Like, I know I should at least get up, but I'm just like, I'm so like, I don't know, angry, just off, like, uh -huh. that I can't, can't pull myself away. And, yeah stuck to the table okay. and it takes like a huge uh, I don't know it's it's really bizarre yeah this is this is uh reminding me of the metaphor of the of the monkey getting the the nut out of the coconut you know the hand goes in and then uh, when the hand is like this with the nut inside it can't get out of the coconut <laughs> yeah. yeah thankfully I've been getting better slowly at uh, uh -huh first recognizing it and then actually being able to do something about recognizing it. Uh-huh. Uh, step one, step two. I think step I think every time you do it it gets a little bit easier to like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually step away. I'm gonna uh, actually do it. Is that and part of the strategy that you learned on on the course? Um I think there were some suggestions from uh, uh from a few of the people that it's good to take a break if you're feeling and I hadn't really thought about that. Uh -huh. um, as much so yeah the, a lot of it was a, like um like poker mindset and as far and apart from poker technique which i did yeah. find helpful so oh that is that is and it's wonderful to have a community of people who have got your back and can give yeah. you their perspective and what's worked for them so that you've got you know one or two or three things to to give it a try yeah. uh because life is no. full of these little experiments right <laughs> No, it's funny that you met just uh, a couple days ago. I've been kind of struggling the last, uh, well, the last couple months have been good. But before then, I had some not so good months. And I've been questioning and struggling in general. And I, I finally I reached out to like a kind of an acquaintance um, that I didn't want to. And he's, a, he's above me in the poker world a few mm -hmm. steps. And I didn't want to like impose on him or, you know, kind of like annoy him with my with my questions of where I'm at. But 
anyway, I, I just finally decided to do it and uh, I sat down and we talked for a while and it was really helpful. And I think he was happy to help me. Um, and it was good. I'm really glad. And I, it calmed me down a little bit good. just uh, having somebody to talk to and be like, yeah, I've been there before. Like it happens. You're probably going to be okay. Like, you know. That's wonderful. And, you know, that that is the real value of having mentors who are a few steps of, ahead of us. They've, they've yeah. solved those problems, but it hasn't been so long in the past that they can't, you know, yeah. uh, connect with you where you are. Yeah. So good, good, good. Well, what do you, so, so uh, it, it sounds that, it sounds to me like your, your music stuff is wonderful. I mean, I, I've forgotten how many guitars uh, <laughs> and musical instruments uh, were you had uh, when you showed up here. It was more than yeah. five, I think. Is that right? Uh, it was probably about five. Yeah, I, I had a a couple guitars and a bass and a mandolin and a fiddle. So I think like five instruments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That. Mandolins are so wonderful. Uh, 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 listening audience, if you haven't uh, uh, heard, you know, that bluegrass music with uh, uh, those wonderful mandolins, give it a shout. When I lived in the <laughs> Southeast, it was all over the place and such delicious music. What made you love the mandolin? It's not so popular here in Texas. Well, um, I was kind of, I was traveling a lot five or 10 years ago and I wanted, I traveled with my guitar once before and it was just really annoying getting like on and off of buses and planes. And sometimes I didn't even want to take it on the plane and I didn't, you know, if I put it under the plane, then it can get frozen if it's not, or not frozen, but cold enough to where it uh, warps the wood. And, right. and so I wanted a smaller instrument and uh, I was kind of thinking between a mandolin and a fiddle and uh they're both very similar actually it's just that they have the same setup of strings but the mandolin has the frets mm -hmm. and uh so yeah i just chose the mandolin because of it was i could accompany myself i could play chords and sing at the same time and it's harder to do that than the fiddle yeah but, uh, because you got to have your chin in place and <laughs> well you can only play like one or maybe two notes at a time too you oh. can't uh, play full chords as much but uh-huh true yeah Recent, recently, I, I was just playing the fiddle yesterday for the first time in a while with my friend that I'm staying with, and it was really nice, and I would like to start, I really, I've been kind of, like, not feeling drawn to music the last couple months, which is, a, a, I don't know how to feel about that, because it's been a big part of my life for a long time, and since I, poker has been more of my focus recently, it's kind of faded into the back a little bit, and uh, I've been trying to reconnect with music, and um, haven't the guitar is always my main instrument but mm -hmm. i just don't feel like i feel much more drawn to playing the fiddle now i, I don't know i just I, maybe it's a new challenge i don't know mm -hmm. what it is I, I love the sound of it i like just trying to hear a melody and play it i really love yeah just the other day just just trying to figure out a melody and get it out and the, that's yeah. uh, really really enjoyable and you can do that on the guitar but it's just doesn't have quite the same power as like the flute or the violin where it's meant to play single line melodies like right. uh, guitar it can kind of but it's not it's not set up as well for it right so, i i get that you know my friend colin uh, he's an australian uh celtic his family heritage is celtic and he is just brilliant at the uh with the fiddle and it's amazing just how evocative yeah. That the music from that instrument really is. Yeah, I love the Celtic fiddle music. It's, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. It's well, Aaron, this has just been great talking with you. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's always delightful to see uh, people who have figured out what it is that they needed to learn uh, to, to get to that next level in life. Because there's always another level ahead of us, unless we just want to be boring and blah. And, uh, you know, the... <laughs> That that just wasn't me. I, I it's not as much fun just to trudge along, and yeah. uh, but then again, some people like the same thing. And if you're a person who likes the same thing over and over and over again, and it takes a long, long time for you to need something different, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You bet. It's been a pleasure. Is uh, is there a way that uh, you um, that if people wanted to reach out to you and see where you might be playing in in music, is there a way for them to reach out to you? No, I'm hidden at the moment. You're uh, hidden at per, the on moment. purpose. Yeah. Okay, on purpose. So 
Hiding is, uh, is a good strategy when it fits you, do it. <laughs> good. Well, Erin, it's, it's been a pleasure. And uh, thanks so much. And we will see you all next time. Bye for now. Right. Thanks. Bye.